Welcome to the EKG chapter. You know, you know those those days when when you show up to rounds feeling almost like a full human because you managed to shower and cram a croissant down your face hole, but then the attending hands you an EKG and asks you to read it in front of everyone, and the ever-loving sinkhole you ordered is not opening up underneath you. Plus, she folded the top of the paper down so you can't even cheat by looking at the computer interpretation. And while many MDs suffered far worse and embarrassing consequences, we here at Sketchy would rather you keep that croissant down and arm you with an easy-to-remember, step-by-step process for reading an EKG under pressure. It's better for you, and it's better for the patients. When you feel like a deer or elk in headlights, take a deep breath in and remember our friend Ray the Moose and his axe-throwing adventure park. Ray Moose is an acronym that stands for Rate, Rate, Rhythm, Axis, Intervals, Morphology, Unique Electrolyte Changes, and Summary. But before we get into the steps, let's quickly go over what causes the EKG tracing to look the way it does. An EKG records waves of electricity in the form of depolarization and repolarization as they move through the heart. We use multiple leads so we can view these waves from different angles. When electricity moves toward a lead, you'll see an upward deflection in the tracing. When it moves away from the lead, you'll see a downward deflection. So... Let's see what the lead to tracing looks like during a single cycle of cardiac contraction and relaxation. Lead two's point of view is from the apex. The P wave is formed when the SA node fires and depolarization moves through the atria. The impulse normally pauses momentarily in the AV node, hence the PR segment. A small Q wave represents septal depolarization. The R wave is ventricular depolarization. The S wave occurs when depolarization finally reaches the furthest basal or top parts of the ventricles. The ST segment is the moment when the ventricles have fully depolarized and contracted, but before repolarization begins. And finally, the T wave corresponds to ventricular repolarization. We'll start with rate. First, you should know that one big box on EKG paper equals 200 milliseconds, and we can use that fact to determine the rate by counting the number of big boxes between successive R waves. If, for example, an R wave occurs on every big box, that means the ventricles are contracting every 200 milliseconds, giving you a heart rate of 300. If the R wave occurs every other box, the rate is 150. So you can count out the rate like this. 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. Or, because the standard EKG records for 10 seconds, you can count the total number of beats along the bottom of the EKG and multiply it by 6. To prevent awkward silences interrupted only by the impatient sighing of the resident, feel free to say all of this out loud. People love hearing your thought process. But... Why is this step rate rate instead of just one rate? Well, because although the atria and ventricles are usually in sync, it's important to catch when they aren't. For example, in atrial flutter, the atria may be going at 300, but the ventricles are at 150. So quickly do the same counting tricks for the P waves. 